What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today, we're gonna go over something basic. It's um how to import your Cinema 4D camera into After Effects. Now, I was on Facebook last week, and this guy posted this video here, and he was having trouble getting his background to move alongside his Cinema 4D render. And so I told him, why don't you just, you know, bring your Cinema 4D camera and your nose in the After Effects, and he expressed that he didn't know how to do this. And so I figured that this would make a good video. I told him it'd be easier for me to show him how to do it rather than explain it. And I figured, if, especially if you're a beginner, this might be good knowledge just to have out there. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. And so one of the very first things you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to open up your file explorer here. And you're gonna to wanna to look for where you installed Cinema 4D. So I have it on my SSD drive. I'm gonna go to Maxon, R20, and then go to Exchange Plugins. Now in here, you will see that there's an After Effects folder. And once we come in here, we wanna look for, I think it's the importer. I'm on Windows, so I hit Win. I'm gonna do Adobe CC. And there we are. So we have this um, AEX file called C4D Importer. Now we'll want to take this file and bring it into After Effects plugin folder. So I'm gonna come to my other folder here, find where I installed my After Effects. So I'm gonna go to Adobe, After Effects 2019, Support Files, and then come down to where it says Plugins. So I'll double click on that and I already have it dragged over, but all you do is click and drag your C4D importer into your After Effects plugins folder and then you're good to go. So let me close these out. And what I have here, I just have a simple scene built with MoGraph, just like a shiny reflective ground with some cubes in the area to populate it. And now I'm gonna show you how you're going to um, make a null for your background. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring that null into After Effects and that's how you're gonna be able to place your sky in your scene. So the way I like to do it is I like to make a shape. So let's say like a sphere and I'm gonna make sure my coordinates are at all zero. And then I'm gonna go over here to create object and make a null. And my null is gonna be at all zeros as well. And so if I come over here in my objects panel, I'm gonna make my sphere a child of the null by just dragging it underneath there. And now they're connected together. So if I move my null around, it's gonna move my sphere as well. And the reason that I do this is because it gives me a visual representation of where my null is at. Sometimes if you're just moving your null around, it's kind of hard to tell in 3D space where your null is at. And so that way I use my sphere as a representation, like, okay, my, uh, my null point is in this area and it's intersecting the ground plane this much, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I could do is I can make my sphere even half the size there and i'm going to go into my my top view and i'm going to bring my null all the way to the edge of my um my plane here now this is going to be where you want your background to be at so just anywhere far off into the distance should be suffice so i'm going to have it back here in this area if we look in our perspective view we can see it's pretty far back and so um what I'm gonna to wanna to do now is I'm gonna name this null. I'm gonna name it null BG for null background. And you can name it whatever you want. I just picked BG. And then we wanna come under tags and we wanna to come to Cinema 4D tags and come down to external compositing. Now what this does is whenever we render, it tells, um, it will tell After Effects that we wanna bring this null into After Effects later on. And what I did earlier too, I did the same exact um, technique I just showed you here, but I made a null for my front because I wanna put my logo into the scene. So I'm not gonna only show you how to bring a background in. I'm gonna show you how you can bring an object in as well. So it's the same exact format. I have my null, I have my sphere, and let's say I want my logo to end up around this area, somewhere around there. So now I could just click off the check mark on my sphere because I don't want those to show up in my renders. And then, um, yeah, so everything that's in my scene now that has an external compositing tag 
I can bring that in, that data in the After Effects, and also your lights. If you have lights in your scene, those will come in as default as well. And then of course your camera is gonna export. So the next step would be to come over to your render settings and you wanna come down to save. And this will usually be folded up, but you just wanna click down compositing project file. And I just click on everything. So I click save, relative, include timeline marker, include 3D data, etc. And my target application is After Effects. You could do Nuke Motion or Digital Fusion, but we're doing After Effects in this case. And so whenever you go to render out, if you're not using Team Render, if you're just using one computer, by default, it's gonna automatically save that data for you as an AEX file. But if you wanna save your own, like if you wanna save it in your own folder, just click Save Project File, and then you can save it anywhere you want. Like I already have a pre-render folder here. And as you can see, it says example AEC. And so the AEC file is what we bring in the After Effects to bring all of our camera data, our null data, and our light data in. And so I already have that saved out here, so I'm not gonna click save again. And I already have the render um, rendered out from earlier. So our next step will be to come into After Effects. And so once I'm in here, I'm gonna click on my project panel right here I'm on PC, so I'm gonna hit Control I for import. And so let's see where my project file was. It's in import C4D captures, pre-render. So wherever you rendered your stuff out, you'll see that you have all your renders, plus you'll have your AEC file. So I wanna bring in just this, um, just this file right here. And I'm gonna click import. And as you can see, it makes folders over here and it makes a project right here. And so I have my composition already set. I double click on it. Let's zoom back a little bit. And we can see we have our project um, renders already in here. And we can see we have our three lights in here and we have our null track. And um, actually it didn't bring in my back one. So I'm gonna delete these. And let me do that again. So I'm gonna go back to After Effects, click on Save Project File. I'm gonna go to my pre-renders. Actually, I could just save it here. So I'm gonna do example, new. Pre-renders, hit save. Give it a couple of seconds to save out. Now let me come back in the After Effects and let me try that again. So I'm gonna hit Control I. I'm gonna go on my AEC file, the one that I just, pre or I just made. Hit import. And now when I go to my composition, there we go. So now I have my null background, my null front, I have my lights, and I have my camera. So as I zoom around the scene, you can see there's my null front right there. And if you can see back here in the distance behind this cube, there's my null background. And so now what I could do is I could just pick like a sky that I already have in my library. So let's just say this one. I'm gonna click and drag this over. Give it a second to load in. There we go. So I'm gonna click and drag and bring that into my background here. Now down here, you have these um, these boxes that are turned to the side. And this is how you make your objects in the 3D. So that file, the JPEG that I just brought in, I wanna click, make that a 3D file. And as you can see, it turns sideways and as I scroll through, we see that the plane is there, our background is there, but it's all discombobulated. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go to my last frame. Let me zoom back into my composition. And I'm gonna go down to my JPEG, I'm gonna hit P, and that brings up my position. Now, I want the position of the background, so I'm gonna go on my null BG, hit P, and now you see that we have keyframes in there and we didn't animate it, so the keyframes are just still. But I could go to my position, hit Control C to copy, and then hit Control V on my JPEG to paste that position. And as you can see, now our sky um, automatically went to that position of the background. So if I scroll through, you can see our JPEG is following that null. And I wanted to look at the camera so I can hit R and that brings up my rotational data. And then I could just rotate it 
any way that you want here. And then I can hit, if I hold down shift and hit S, it brings my scale up. So now I can really, I can just scale it up to fill the screen. And as you can see, it's all blowing out. And that's because it's being reflective of the lights that are on our scene. So there's an easy fix for that. If I come back down to my JPEG, if I hit the um, little arrow tab here, click on material options. And now down here, we have these options for accept shadows and accept lights. So I'm gonna turn both of those off. And now you can see we have our sky here. So I'm gonna collapse this. Let me move it up a tad bit. There we go. So now we have our background in our scene. And as you can see, as we're moving through here, we're getting some black areas back here. That's our alpha. If I click on here, we can see that's our alpha. So all you have to do is make your background a little bit larger if you like, or, you know, you can move it over. But right now, you see that's how we have our JPEG tracking in our data. I mean, tracking in our scene. And so now, if you want stuff to be in the foreground, we have this null here. And I can actually take like my logo. So I have my Wimbush Immersive logo. Let's bring this in over top of our rendered file here. And we have our logo here in the center. So I'm gonna do it through the same steps. I'm gonna make this a 3D object. I'm gonna go to my null track front, hit P, copy the position. I'm gonna paste the position on my logo. And there we go. Now I have the Wimbush Immersive logo in my scene, if I hit S for scale, bring this down a tad bit. And then I'm gonna hit R and I'm just gonna rotate it. Let's say negative 90. So it's going that direction. And again, you can see that we have some shadows on the logo and that's because the lights that we brought in from Cinema 4D are actually affecting our scene and After Effects now. So I could just go through the same steps again Go to my material options down here on the left, click accept shadows off, and then accept lights off, and there we go. So now our logo is in accepting any lights or any shadows. Everything is nice, clean, and clear. And if I hit um, zero on my keyboard and do a RAM preview, you can see everything is tracked into the scene. And there we go, we're flying over top of the logo. Now everything's in the scene. And of course, you know, for this background, if you do on a sky, you want to pick something that's a higher resolution. I just picked this for the example of the tutorial. It doesn't look the best, but it will do. But that's basically how you bring your camera data into After Effects from Cinema 4D. So again, I hope this helps you out. Um, if you have any questions, please leave me a um, comment in the, in the comment section. As always, you know, give me a thumbs up if this helped you out. You know, subscribe to the channel. Tell me what, you know, you guys are needing help with again. And um, I also wanted to mention that I'm working with Boris FX. And so if you go to their site, type in keyword Wimbush, you'll get 15% off of Mocha, uh, Continuum, and Sapphire. And I'll be doing tutorials for that as well. So make sure you keep a lookout for that. But yeah, this is the basics of importing data into After Effects from Cinema 4D. And so if you guys need any more basic tutorials or even more advanced ones that I have coming, make sure you click that like button and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, keep creating and take care.